Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the factors that can increase or decrease genetic biodiversity. In the last video, we looked at what's meant by genetic biodiversity and how it can be calculated. In this video, we're looking at how genetic biodiversity can increase or decrease. Now, in any population of organisms, there are only two ways that genetic biodiversity can increase. Firstly, random mutations can take place, creating new alleles. Secondly, migration between populations can transfer alleles. I'm showing you here a population of alpacas. Imagine that an alpaca from a different group migrated into this group. This individual may have different alleles. And when interbreeding takes place, these alleles can now enter the population's gene pool. Scientists call this process gene flow. Now there are several ways that genetic biodiversity can decrease. Firstly, as a result of natural selection, individuals with advantageous alleles are more likely to survive and reproduce than individuals with less advantageous alleles. Over time, the less advantageous alleles will become less common in the population. So natural selection can reduce genetic biodiversity. In selective breeding or artificial selection, humans select individuals in a population for breeding. That's because those individuals have alleles which are seen as advantageous. For example, selective breeding has been used to create varieties of cattle and crops. Individuals without the desired alleles are not allowed to breed. So over time, these alleles disappear from the population. Sometimes, selective breeding can result in breeds which fall out of favour and become rare. I'm showing you here a Manx Lockton sheep. These were bred on the Isle of Man. By the 1950s, this sheep breed had become rare, with only 43 Manx Lockton alive. Because of the small number of individuals, genetic biodiversity within this breed decreased. Sometimes, the number of individuals of a wild species will decrease, for example due to hunting. There are only around 400 Sumatran tigers left in the wild. There are around 200 Sumatran tigers in zoos, and these are bred to increase numbers. However, with such a small number of individuals, the size of the gene pool is very small. Now another way that genetic biodiversity can be reduced is by cloning plants. Many gardeners take cuttings of plants with desirable features. When these cuttings are planted, they grow into new plants identical to the original. Because these plants are all clones, genetic biodiversity within the species decreases. Now sometimes the population of a species will crash to an extremely low level. This shows the black robin, which is found on islands off the coast of New Zealand. Rats and cats were introduced to the islands by humans, and this caused the black robin population to collapse. By 1980, there were only five black robins left, including one fertile female. Efforts by conservationists have increased the black robin population to around 300. However, all of these black robins are descended from that one fertile female. When a gene pool is severely reduced like this, Scientists call this a genetic bottleneck, and genetic bottlenecks severely reduce genetic biodiversity. Sometimes a small number of individuals move, forming an isolated population with limited genetic biodiversity, and scientists call this the founder effect. For example, Isle Royale in the United States is isolated from the mainland, and before 1949, no wolves lived on the island. However, in 1949, a small number of wolves crossed an ice bridge to Isle Royale and formed a population. All of the wolves on the island were then descended from that small number of original wolves. And because of this, there was a low level of genetic biodiversity in the wolf population on the island. In 1997, another wolf made its way onto the island, increasing the genetic biodiversity. OK, now sometimes genetic biodiversity can change due to random chance. Scientists call this genetic drift. For example, some individuals within a population may not reproduce. And if these individuals are the only ones with a certain allele, then that allele will be lost. This is most likely to happen when a population is small and has low genetic biodiversity. 
for example after a genetic bottleneck has taken place. Genetic drift is random and is not linked to any feature of an allele. Ok, so hopefully now you can describe the factors that can increase or decrease genetic biodiversity.